Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 6th. And this being Super Bowl weekend, I'm not going to make this TDD report real long because I'm sure a lot of people probably will not be watching because of Super Bowl, and I can't see as I really blame them. So anyway, first up I have here, this is from Mashable, Google's Skybender project. From I can almost talk. Google Skybender project plans to beam 5G internet from solar drones. And it's a very short article, so I might as well just read the few paragraphs here. The project called Spybender, Skybe Spybender, I can't talk at all. Skybender involves several prototype transceivers and multiple drones, which are housed at Virgin Galactic's Gateway to Space Terminal in New Mexico's Spaceport America. Information about the secret project, which is part of the Google Access team. That's what they call this. You know, the, the title calls this a secret project, and the article calls it a secret project, but yet somehow they know all this. They know where the drones are, what they're doing, or anything, so... But needless to say, Project Loon was gleaned from documents that were obtained in accordance with public record laws. So I guess because they had to search for them and, you know, use a, maybe a Freedom of Information Act or um, search through public records or something like that, that makes it a secret. Skybender works with millimeter wave tr radio transmissions, which can theoretically transmit gigabytes of data every second, up to 40 times more than 4G LTE systems. Um, University of Washington in Seattle professor of engineering tells the Guardian the advantage of this technology is that existing cell phone spectrum is overcrowded. However, millimeter wave transmissions have a shorter range than that of mobile phone signal, which is sometimes uh, something the experiments are likely striving to improve. So, um, yeah, I've been hearing it for quite a while, but it would be nice to really see it if Google could actually put some birds in the sky and give us 5G all over the sky or uh, free internet or um, ad supported internet. I've heard about that too, that Google could launch some type of devices that would stay up uh, as low orbiting uh, um, satellites or drones or um, solar powered aircraft and keep them flying up there and give us free or ad supported internet. Would be really nice to see. And this next one's a YouTube video from my friend Robert Bangalore Bobble. Um, this is from the channel eHang. And it's kind of like the same thing I've shown many times before. Somebody's got an idea that they're going to take a drone and then make it up to a large enough size to uh, carry people and then make it pretty much autonomous so you don't have to have a pilot's license or anything. The vehicle flies itself. But the difference about this one, and I won't even try to pronounce the guy's name. They, they put it in the video here and you can see it. But if you watch this video carefully, it starts out with CGI and it makes you want to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But about halfway through the video, it shows that he is kind of serious about it. Not only has his company developed a, a helicopter for China that's got a counter-rotating uh, main propeller, he has also been slowly scaling up model designs, including one commercial version of a drone, and then scaling it up and scaling it up, and you can see the testing. So looks to me like he could very well be, uh, this was posted in January 6, 2016, and he could very well be within a year or less of actually testing this out full scale. It looks like uh, he's up to pretty close to, to full scale now. So maybe something will be going on with this. It's called the Ehang 184, world's most first autonomous aerial vehicle. And uh, yeah, he's uh, actually got something to show for it other than CGI. I mean, I've had so many people send in that um, flying car with the small wings, and it's like all you ever see is CGI of it. I want to I want to see some real prototypes, even a half-scale prototype would be great, and it looks like towards the end of this video you're seeing a half-scale prototype, and uh, yeah, actually put some effort into something real. This last one is from Forbes, Pioneering Internet Radio Service Live 365 is closing tomorrow, which this article is a week old, this was in January 30th, so it's almost a week old now, but how many of you have actually had a Live 365 account? I actually had a Live 365 account. Um, nice little service where you can, you know, play DJ, uh, you know, play an amateur DJ or whatever, you know, stream some songs for your friends and stuff like that. I mean, the free account didn't really give you enough. I think you could maybe support about half a dozen streams, and then the thing would overload, and you'd have to, you know, upgrade your account so you had more bandwidth or something. But yeah, kind of sad to see Live 365 go. Um, but uh, yeah, they had a good ride and everything like that. So. Um, if you had a Live 365 account, um, I don't think there's any way you can even get into it or log it because when I go to the page now, it's just a uh, appears to be a dead blank page. And it says here, Live 365 launched in the summer of 1999 and was immediately a success. Nothing like quite like it had ever been tried online. Such a scale and people around the world reacted positively. The company allowed the average everyday music fan to become a DJ, turning everyone into a potential influencer. So maybe it did. Maybe it, even during its legacy, it caused a lot of uh, careers to start and 
what would that be, 16, almost 17 years of a run? Not bad for an internet company, I'd say. So anyway, those of you that uh, are enjoying the Super Bowl this weekend, hope you enjoy it, and thank you if you took time from uh, your Super Bowl party in the weekend to uh, watch a little bit of my report, and for all the rest of you, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a good one. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.